I think a couple that sews together stays together for sure. You need some help? Let Might have go. a few questions, okay? <laughs> okay. Norris and I live together and we work together. It's very rare for us to have one fabric that we both have to be creative with. Mimi is an amazing designer, an award-winning blogger, mother, wife, businesswoman. So I have to step my game up if I want to compete with her. I don't like it. <laughs> you can you can't laugh already, I'm not even finished. Okay. I would say I'm not competitive, but Norris would certainly disagree. I just love a really good challenge. What is this? Okay. never get away. I'm Bye. just trying to get something, that's all. Bye. Dang. You're going to learn tips and techniques, and you're also going to learn a little swag on how to style your pieces. Join us for He Sewed, She Sewed, only on Blueprint. Ooh, look at that <laughs> dress. This is beautiful, baby. Okay. Are you what ready? What you got? Yeah, let me see what you see. Okay, it's a floral. Okay, okay. I can do floral. I mean... Uh-oh. Is this a panel print? <laughs> it is. That's gonna be goofy, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I thought it was a border print. Piece. Continuous. The panel piece is gonna be difficult because my panel piece is a little bit longer than yours. It is, it's a little difficult. Okay, we'll just have to get a little bit creative about where we place our pattern pieces so we can use the most of the panel. Okay, well, so let's get creative and see what we can do. I know Norris thinks that I picked that panel print to sabotage him, but I didn't. I actually thought it was a border print, so I'm gonna have to get creative too. So, let me see what I got. Oh, now this would be really cute, actually, if I could make a coat from that beautiful floral panel. That, well, it has enough seam lines, but I would have to do some build out, and I don't think I want to take that on right now. So, let's set that aside. Now, I could do one of my simplicity patterns, but I don't want a trench, and unfortunately, the dress the length on it is just gonna be a little too long for that panel, so it's not gonna work, and it's not as flowy. So although my fabric is lightweight, it just doesn't have enough drape for it to accommodate this sort of style. All right, so this right here is a suit. I love making suits, but I don't think this one right here is gonna be perfect with the fabric. The pants are way too long, and you know I have long legs, so it probably wouldn't fit in the panel, all right? Um, next. I want to make a button-up shirt, but I don't think it's going to pop like I really want it to. It's going to be kind of boring because it's just a basic button-up shirt. So let me see what else I can find. Let's see, oh. Now this one right here might be the perfect fit for me because I love vintage patterns. This is a 1950s vintage cabana set. It's a two-piece and it'll give me more than just a button-up shirt. It'll give me the shorts and the shirt at the same time. And I think the floral print will play very well with this particular pattern because it's a summer vibe, day party kind of look. So I think this is the one I'm about to go with. Aha, uh -huh. now this could work. Now, I really love the design of this dress. It's really classic, it has beautiful lines. So I figured if I could use floral on the hem and then on the bodice, I could use this little cutout, this little yoke piece for the neckline in a solid color out of that little khaki area that I have, and I think that would work really nicely. Okay, so the back of the pattern doesn't have any much variation than the front does, so that's easy, right? I still have a full back and the bottom. I have a bit of a split, but that's not a big deal. And all I need to do is really worry about matching the floral on the side so it goes all the way around my body. Besides that, I think I'm good to go. All right, let's see if this is going to work. Now that I'm doing the two-piece cabana set, I'm going to start with my shirt. I'm going to do most of the floral print on the bottom of the shirt, and it's gonna gradually fade out into the khaki color. But I'm going to place my collar piece where most of the floral is so I can have heavy floral at the top of my shirt. And the same thing with the back piece. Next, I'm going to look at my shorts. Um, I couldn't do pants because I'm way too tall for that, so the only pattern piece I could find are my shorts. And I'm gonna place these right where you see less of the floral, and it's gonna gradually fade out back into the khaki. So once I do that, I'm going to start cutting them out. So let me grab my front piece, place my pattern weights, and then I'm going to begin cutting. <laughs> I 
How you doing over there with those hedge cutter scissors of yours? <laughs> don't be hating my man tools. Baby, you gonna get tendonitis <laughs> using those things. I don't know how you cut with that. <laughs> All right, this looks really good. This is exactly what I wanted for my collar. It's gonna have a pop of color up here and you'll see it fade out into the khaki color. Okay, let's talk about pattern placement. I think what I'm gonna do is really use the bottom heavy print of this for my hem, right? So if I place the hem of my skirt where all this really beautiful floral print is, it'll be really nice, sort of trickle up into my waistline and then we can add even more pop with the bodice. So for the bodice, I'm gonna place it where all the heavy florals are because that'll just be so beautiful up top and it's all cut in one piece which makes it easy for me to sort of place it and have those big floral prints wherever I want them. And then of course I have this really gorgeous peak of the neckline and I think to add even more interest, I'm gonna place it on the solid part of this khaki. So not only will it give it more interest, but it'll help it pop a little bit more. Then I'll sort of figure out where I'm gonna place the back of my bodice and the back of my skirt. But I think I'm ready to cut. Okay, so for my shorts, I went ahead and did my welt pocket. As you can see right here, it's on my front right piece. And next, I need to go ahead and turn under on the edge, three eighths of an inch, so I can encase my waistband. So I'm gonna grab my Taylor's ham, and I'm just going to turn under three eighths of an inch. And when I press, I press my fingers down, so when I get to my iron, it'll press it really nicely. Okay, once I have it pressed all the way around, three eighths of an inch, I wanna go ahead and grab my front piece and show you my fold line. I'm gonna grab my seam gauge and I'm going to measure from my fold line three eighths of an inch in. So that leaves me one and three fourths of an inch to fold under. So one quick note, you wanna make sure that three eighths of an inch is always tucked under when you turn the fold line. That's so we can encase the waistband all the way around. Also, keep your seam gauge handy. You wanna make sure the waistband is even all the way around and press. Okay guys, I'm super excited to show you this neckline because I think it's really creative the way that they finish it off. So you can see from this little picture here, you might not be able to tell completely, but this little neckline yoke piece actually continues into the sleeve, which I think is really clever and a really nice way to finish it. So what we're gonna do is we're going to almost completely finish this piece before we sandwich it between the bodice and the lining. So I have already interfaced my facing piece and I'm using a weft lightweight interfacing because I don't wanna add weight to my fabric. I just wanna add a little bit of stability at that neckline. You don't want that peak to flop over. So I have already pinned here, and what we're gonna do is we're going to stitch across the top, then down to this little dot, and then I'm gonna trim off some of that excess because you don't want a lot of bulk in your seams. So I'm gonna stitch from the bottom up to this little dot, and I'm gonna put a pin here because I wanna make sure that I remember to stop and back stitch there. Okay, let's head over to the sewing machine. I'm gonna go ahead and clip off about half of the seam allowance. I'm gonna cut a little bit of that corner. And now, just to be safe, I'm gonna use my scissors to clip just below that dot and trim that little area. Okay, we're gonna turn this right side out and I'm gonna poke out my corner. I'm gonna use my little scissors here. Now this is actually not a good thing to do. Don't do as I do, do as I say. Use a point turner or something with a little more of a blunt end because you could poke right through your fabric and that's not cool. Okay, now that I have it turned right side out and I have my corner nice and sharp, remember this is gonna be on your body, right? This is the neckline, so you want this to be really nice and sharp. Now I'm gonna take it over to the ironing table and give it a good press. Okay, next I'm just gonna turn it right side out. 
just like that. So I need three elastic bands for all three parts. But I think it might be kind of cool to put a drawstring in the middle section. Before I do that, I need to make button holes for the front. So I'm just going to eyeball it maybe two inches from the center seam, and I'm going to mark in the center and then do the same thing for the other side, just like that. So now that I have my placements, I'm gonna go over to the machine and make my button holes. You know what, I'm gonna need some drawstring. Hey babe. Yes, my love. You have any drawstring? Uh, what kind? Any kind. Uh, let me see. All right, she's so great. Will this do? Thank you so much, baby. Button holes can be scary. Once you start, there's no going back. I use my small scissors to cut the button holes out. So satisfying. Okay, so once my button holes are done, I can stitch around the waistband starting at the center back. So because this is your waistband, you wanna make sure all your lines are very even. Remember to keep at least a two inch opening so you can insert your elastic. For me, it's just easier to take the elastic and measure it around my waist. I'm gonna feed the elastic through using the world's most high-tech tool. It's a safety pin. Okay, now that I have my elastic all the way through my waistband, I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this down, and I'm gonna do the same thing for my other two elastics and then my jawstring. I'm gonna catch back up with you after I do that. Okay, so I'm gonna give this a really good press. I wanna press all my seams to one side because although we're under stitching, I still, huh? What you doing? Nothing. What's that? It's a woven sock. You ain't making no damn sock. It's a headpiece. <laughs> <laughs> she ain't making no socks. I ain't that damn stupid. You're so sneaky. I don't even know what I was doing. I was pressing, right? Okay, look. Okay, so I'm gonna press my seam to one side. I'm gonna press it to the side that I plan to understitch. So I want that to lay nice and flat. Now by doing this understitch, I'm ensuring that my neckline stays nice and flat and that that facing is not gonna peek out to the outside. Now let's go understitch. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and understitch. Now this is gonna set the tone for the rest of my dress because this is the most important part and the most visible on my neck. So first you wanna make sure that your seam allowance is all the way to the right of you, okay? Because you're gonna be stitching through all layers and you wanna make sure that you're about an eighth of an inch away from your seam line. So you're gonna try and get in there as best as you can and as far as you can. Just go slow. And then every once in a while, peek inside just to make sure that your seam allowance is in the right direction. Now when it gets tricky, when you have this little tube here, you're just gonna sort of open up as far as you can and stitch. And when you just can't go no more, back stitch and cut your threads. All right, now that I've got this done, I'm gonna make the darts on my front and back bodice. I'm gonna stitch my side seams, attach my yoke, and then move on to the skirt. This shirt is pretty fast. It has a riding sleeve and a really easy collar to sew up. Oh wow, this looks really good. I love the way my shirt came out. The floral matches from my shoulder all the way across the front and I can't wait to finish this up. I'm almost finished. How you doing over there? Um, it's getting there. I'm trying to finish up. You don't sound too confident. I mean. <laughs> oh, she's so cute. Okay, I nailed it. The actual panels worked in my favor, so I'm super excited because it's gonna look amazing on me. I can't wait to try it on. All right, my waistband is all complete. I have all three elastics done and my jawstring is all the way through. And then I went ahead and just did a knot. Okay, so for my shirt, check it out. My collar looks really good. The floral stands out up against the khaki. Nice little contrast right there. And I can't wait to style this up. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Let me see what you got. Ooh, 
Ooh, look at that dress. <laughs> Babe, you look amazing. Thank you. I love the little neck collar, whatever that is. I don't know what it is, but I love it. That's so good. I love what you did with the panel. Like, who wears a two-piece floral suit that great? Okay, let's review. She sold a really cool dress with some vintage-style details in the neckline. Great use of floral print. And he sewed a vintage cabana set with shorts. Of course, because his pants for his long legs wouldn't fit on those fabric panels. He added a drawstring waist and some great detail to his pocket. We're ready for some poolside parties. Next time on He Sold, She Sold, I'm gonna bring out some fire plaid print for Mimi. Yeah? Yeah? How long we been together? For a minute. Well, what's up? You don't like it? You know I hate using plaid. Babe, you don't like it? 